What's going on, Sim Nation? This is MC Shook, MC Shook Live. Uh, I got an email this morning uh, that actually touched me. I, the, they, they were talking about the parchment prison issue, and they actually asked me to uh, weigh in on it. So I'm kind of doing that right now. Uh, the part, so if y'all don't know, parchment prison is a state prison, a state facility uh, in Mississippi, uh, equivalent to maybe what Angola would be in Louisiana or whatever your state penitentiary would be in your particular state. Parchment is a prison that um, houses the high security inmates for, on the state level. Uh, I've never been to an equivalent prison like that. Um, the closest I ever went to was Elaine Hunt Correctional Center. But I think the mentality is about the same in the prison. Um, so parchment, the CBS is reporting that parchment is overrun by gangs and gang violence and this is the stuff that's going on there and uh the gangs uh, it's basically the the inmates have the keys gangs allegedly were mississippi prison where three inmates were killed in three days uh two people escaped um and it's a lot of stuff going on but there are the the offenders are actually reporting themselves to their family of people getting stabbed people getting beat uh and that the, the, the conditions are horrific and that the conditions are what's leading to the gangs having um, control of the prison in a sense. The conditions also being the lack of staffing, that they're saying that the 1,300 vacant positions for um, corrections officers in the state of Mississippi and uh, the great many number of that is at parchment. Um, a lot of celebrities are actually talking about this issue as well. Um, I like to um, just kind of just show what is uh, going on with some of the celebrities that are actually uh, posting. As y'all can see, this is they're, they're trying to have this prison shut down. There's a change.org petition. This is uh, the celebrity Waka Flocka Flame talking about parchment, and they, they were, they're asking that. Uh, Mississippi prisons on lockdown after violence leaves fives dead. I mean, this is this is a real, real hot button issue. So a lot of celebrities, including Yandy, uh, are actually weighing in on this and and, and, and talking about this. Um, and as I look at it from the outside looking in, um, I think that that this is an issue that needs to be talked about as far as prison reform goes. I think I think that some of the issues that they're having with staffing should be addressed. Uh, they're saying that the average correctional officer probably makes about $26,000 a year in Mississippi, which according to uh, the U.S. Department of Justice and Labor Statistics, that's poverty level. So they're not even paying the corrections officers. So that makes people don't want to apply for the positions. Um, a lot of positions are filled by women who have limited access to what they can do as far as um, in a male facility. This is um, a lot of stuff that's going on in the state of Mississippi. And so we're doing this, this is happening at the cost and the peril of offenders and their families and corrections officers and their families. Um, and so this is what's, what's, this is the issue. So I think, so my way in is just simply this, the first thing that everyone needs to do in every single post and every single thread and every single um, video and, and, and article that I've read about this issue, you hear the refer, they refer to the prison population as inmates. And you can see it's like five inmates dead, three inmates missing, this inmates doing this, inmates doing that. And I think this dehumanizes this, just that word alone, dehumanizes this for the public. So the public, are, is, you, you don't, the, we're taught that the word inmate is a bad, bad word and we should all quit like, ooh, they deserve it. And that's the kind of the mindset. But if you say this, five people day, five men missing, it, it, these are human beings, mind you. Um, when I was in prison, we were we were taught to refer to ourselves as inmate this, inmate number this, and and offender this, and offender this, offender Roussel, offender this, inmate this, and so we're th thought of ourselves as less than human at that point. And I think the public right now, and even some of the people that are trying to help, are saying, "Well, this inmate, this inmate." As soon as we can get the mindset about that, these are people, 
These are actually human beings with families and friends and loved ones that live and breathe. They may have violated the laws of this land and this country and that, that state, but they're human beings in some capacity. They're human beings. They, they live, they breathe, breathe, they bleed, they wake up, they use the bathroom, they eat. They have these basic human needs regardless. And so when you, you humanize them, then it becomes a real issue. If you the, the headlines, oh, five inmates dead, three inmates were killed. Uh, who, it, 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 you're not humanized. But five, three people, three men, three brothers, three sons, three fathers of someone were killed. And, and I think that's the first step. Let's not just say these inmates and, and, and dehumanize the fact that these are human beings living and breathing who just happen to make a mistake. Mississippi is a very Republican state and their laws are very harsh. And a lot of times in this case, from what I understand, in this case and some other cases, a lot of these people that are serving life and all these extended sentences are people that are repeat drug offenders. So that's like not really nonviolent, not saying that that's OK or saying it's OK. So a lot of these people that are getting it's not OK for anyone. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. But a lot of them and the majority of them are just people that fell to the harsh laws of Mississippi when it comes to property crimes and, and things like that. So they're human. And they're human and they deserve to be treated and talked about as such in life or in death. In their death, it's they're not three inmates, they're three people that die. And I think if we adjust that mindset, it becomes a different narrative. So that's first. Um, the second part about it is that so if we could so first change the mindset. So three people die, now we need now we got something to talk about. Uh, the second part about that is I think we start at the top and work our way down. I, I do believe that. Um, one of the, the email asked me, do I have any advice as far as legally what should be done or, or whatever, um, and I'm not an attorney. I did sue prisons when I was incarcerated for based on conditions, and you do have a lot of civil rights uh, laws. I was lucky though. I was a lucky person to have a sister that works for a lawyer that was able to send me materials that um, were that that could help me help myself. Uh, in that case, I had the time, she had the knowledge, and it kind of like kind of married itself in that way. Um, so the 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 basis of that is saying that for for the inmate, the person that is incarcerated for that person, if they have family members to reach out, the best thing that we could give them is knowledge about their rights, and that's as simple as doing a Google search, printing out a sentence. Um, as far as, and make sure they have a, enough stamps on the book to mail out the legal work. Um, as far as what we can do on the outside, as far as helping these people, it's starting at the top. Uh, they have, on many of the posts, posted the Mississippi governor's <laughs> information, the DOC information, and, 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 and the like for us to call. They don't like getting calls from constituents. They don't like getting calls from people that have to elect their bosses. So I think that you need we need to do that. That's that's the number two from what we could do outside. So from from our standpoint, we started the governor, the Department of Corrections secretary, the uh, you know, the warden, and we, we can make calls and say what's going on there. Have y'all uh, solved the issue? When do you expect to solve the issue? Then they don't like that. And what happens is they start to act. This is a lot of national attention on their prison. Then the second part about that is we keep the people that are in there informed. Find their family members. Y'all ask me to what to do. And I think find their family members and make sure they have the knowledge and, and, and the knowledge to know what to do because they can file for their civil file suits for their civil rights. Jails don't like to be sued. And usually the situation is remedied that way. Uh, it costs a moment to get sued. A lot of times people are sympathetic when it comes to conditions. They don't like to be in front of juries where uh, uh, an offender gets to tell them exactly how barbaric this this prison thing is. And so a lot of times this is the remedy. Um, and I guess the third thing I think that we could all do now is, is go to the change.org, go to the things and make it aware. Repost it, share it on Instagram, share this video, share <laughs> share share the story. The more people that are knowledgeable about it, the better. If 10% of the people that can, I mean, it's easy to press a like button. It's easy to leave a comment, oh, this is sad and move on with your day. But this is what we need to do. We need to actually be active and say, hey, 
not only am I just going to say, oh, okay, this is the same, but I'm going to repost it and let everybody else that I know and everybody that follows me know that this is an issue. So um, those are the things that I think I wanted to make this a kind of little short video just to weigh in on what um, is going on there and what I think is going on there. Um, and that's what that was. And I, I will be I will be posting in the comments of this video the actual links to the change.org petition as well as uh, the contact information for the Mississippi Department of Corrections and um, be feel free to uh, help join and probably save some human beings life. I love y'all and I will talk to y'all later. Thank y'all.